Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in this week's 10 minute workshop, well, we're continuing with the budget spraying theme. And I'm taking a look at an HVLP sprayer that costs just £30. That's coming up next. Ooh. So, when I first embarked on this low end spraying setup idea, uh, I figured I'd be using a, an HVLP sprayer, high volume, low pressure. Uh, uh, I bought one a few years ago for about a couple of hundred quid. That was a low-end one back then. It was a little Earl-X one. Uh, but now the price has come down dramatically. You can still spend a lot of money on a, on a really good HVLP, but the, the actual price of cheap ones has come down spectacularly. Uh, Screwfix sells an Urbauer one for about 60 quid, I think, maybe 55. Uh, and I thought I'd be sort of budgeting for one of those in this kind of setup. Um, I've got to give a shout-out to Tomas over at Casual DIY. He did a a review of a 40 quid HVLP uh, the other day. Uh, if you don't know Thomas's channel, uh, channel go and check it out, uh, Casual DIY, I'll put a link uh, in the description below. Uh, really great channel. Anyway, he had a, a like an all-in-one, a bit like a, one of those sort of solenoid type sprayers, but it was a genuine HVLP. Had a big pot on it, 1.3 liter, uh, liters, I think he said. Uh, but he's done a nice review of it. Go and take a look at that. Uh, and that got me thinking, well, you know, if, if you can get that for 40 quid on Amazon, what else do they have? I took a look and it turns out you can get an HVLP system for about 25 quid if, you, if you're if happy with it. I went for this one. Uh, I think I've mentioned in another video. This is the TerraTech uh, HVLP system. It was 30 quid delivered for an HVLP system. Uh, but of course, the burning question is, how good is it? Well, I've used it for a little bit, and I'm going to use it now just to show you, uh, actually on a job, um, uh, just to put some primer, uh, primer undercoat on it. Uh, it actually works extremely well. So I'm in the middle of my sort of little you know, basic spray booth here. Everything's a bit sort of white and bright at the moment. I'm wearing a white shirt as well, so I'm just this sort of floating head bobbing about. Um, but this is the little the little spray gun. It's a TerraTech. Comes with a two-year warranty, which is pretty impressive for thirty quid. Um, it, it is a very basic, very simple little. I keep wanting to call it a compressor. It's a turbine, uh, six hundred and fifty watts, uh, connected to your spray gun by length of hose. This is just a simple push fit, and there's a bayonet on the bottom of the uh, turbine unit. Uh, and that's more or less all you can do. You can change the uh, front to get a, a vertical or horizontal spray pattern, or if you put it in a diagonal, you get a, a dot circle pattern. Uh, uh, you can vary the amount of paint flow by a sort of fairly rudimentary twist part at the back. Uh, simple trigger on the gun, gets things going. As I say, the benefit of this one, to me anyway, is that it comes with two paint pots, which is really handy, which means that if you're doing a lot of primer, say, like I am now, uh, you can keep a pot of paint on the go and have the other one ready for cleanup. One thing you do need to do, one thing you do need to do with HVLP, uh, and you should do with sprayers generally, is to strain your paint. And that's what I'm going to do now. I've got the paint sort of mixed up for the next sort of batch that I'm going to spray. Uh, but I just want to strain it because obviously clearing blockages in something like this is much more of a meal than uh, using an airless. With an airless you can just sort of spin the uh, uh, spin the tip around and blast it clear, but you can't do that with this. So you need to get uh, need to make sure that the paint is uh, is well strained. So that's all we're going to do now. We'll strain the paint that we have. Uh, we'll pop it on there, and then we'll get some spraying done. I'm using a paint strainer that you can pick up from any decorator's merchant and straining into a paint kettle, then back into the pot. And yes, I did foolishly thin it down first without straining. Rookie mistake. So the job that I'm going to be using this on is it's kind of a paid favour for a friend of my wife's. Um, I'm actually reusing uh, some bits of MDF that I didn't use for the, for the big job. I, I sprayed them up and then didn't need them. Uh, so uh, some of these, it'll just be a question of cleaning up the edges and getting some primer on that. Then we can get a, a it'll be a different top coat on everything. Uh, but some of them is, is raw MDF, so we'll be starting from scratch. And again, we've got our sort of spray booth set up here. One great thing uh, which came through uh, a subscriber, and my apologies, I can't remember his name. I'll try and dig it, it out and flesh it up on the screen. Uh, but one great idea was to put nails, like a bed of nails, 
into these three by twos uh, so that the, the boards can rest on those uh, away from the surface because when I did it before uh, obviously these boards get paint on them uh, and it was really good to be able to get those off the surface and you can spray all, all around the edges much more easily, much more readily. So that's a great idea and thank you very much for that. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the extent of it. A, a few little bits and pieces of raw MDF uh, to prime and paint uh, and a few bits that are, have already been painted uh, but we'll just go around the edges and, uh, and get a coat of primer on that. So I'm going to move you to a safe place so you can watch me from a distance uh, and then we'll see, uh, we'll see how far we get with this little bit of spray. So when it comes to cleanup, it's actually not that bad. Um, obviously, once you finish with the gun and done your job, you unscrew the pot of paint. And I like to give the tube a bit of a wipe. I usually pull the trigger as well, try and release any paint that's still in the tube. Get the last few drips out. And then we can just pop up a glove over that cup with the paint in it. Obviously, if you're done with that finish or whatever, you can get rid of that. Yeah, again, big benefit of having two cups. You can have one with water in. So all you do, you pop the fresh one in there with water. And into a bucket like this. Can you see there? I might bring you forwards a bit. Um, you just... You probably saw that. You probably saw that uh, as the, the the paint and the line is sprayed out, then it runs clear with fresh water. As soon as that's done, that that's it. It's sort of clean enough. If you're just going to leave it for an hour or two and come back to it and spray some more finish, if you do need to leave it, uh, if you are changing finishes or laying it up. After a session, what I tend to do again, just dispel the water that's in there with a bit of tissue. And I like to use a pipe cleaner just to go down that tube, just to give it a good clean out to make sure that there's no uh, paint residue in there or as little as possible. And then if you are going to lay it up for a while, I'd strip the no nozzle down as well, take the front off and make sure that the, uh, the front little nozzle is, is clear there. There's no needle in this gun, it's just a little nylon thing. So you do need to make sure that that's nice and clear. But otherwise, that's it. Simple as that. Ready to get on with the, the next job or the next uh, change of colour or finish. Just want to have a very quick talk about the finish on this. Um, it's it's pretty fantastic. I've just had a, a couple of sheets in the in the bright sunlight out there by the doorway, and I mean that's a, a harsh, cruel light. And it's, it's not flawless, but these hadn't been denibbed yet. This is just a single coat of primer, two coats on the edges. Uh, and it is absolutely superb. Um, I need, I'd need to properly look and see if it's as good as what I get from my Groco. But I, I will, I am, I will be perfectly happy to use this sort of level of finish on a job. It's... Uh, it's perfectly acceptable. Amazing.